Hello everybody, it's your friendly digital technology librarian Christy here. We've reached another Friday, so of course I have another Film Rec Friday ready for everybody out there. So this past Sunday was the Academy Awards, and since then I've been in a bit of a critically acclaimed film binge-watching mode. And because of that, I kind of thought it might be interesting to combine Women's History Month with award-nominated and winning films. Uh, so today, all three recommendations that I'm offering up are both critically acclaimed films and also happen to cover topics that are particularly pertinent to women's history. As always, these film recommendations are available to you entirely for free with the use of your Milan Berlin Library card. So with Without any further ado, let's get to the recs. Okay, so my first recommendation is available on both DVD and Blu-ray via our Clevenet service. Uh, when this movie hit theaters, there was a fair amount of controversy surrounding it. Then when the most recent round of Academy Award nominations were released, there was another round of controversy surrounding it. But at the end of the day, I do think it's an excellent movie and really worth watching, and that is 2023's Barbie. So if you would have told me a couple years ago that the Barbie movie was going to be one of my favorite films of the year, I would have laughed at you outright because this is not a franchise that I have felt particularly connected to in the past. Um, even as a kid, my favorite thing to do was to like chop the hair off the Barbie and like make it sort of unbarbie-ish. Anyway, like I was not, I was, I did not grow up as a Barbie girl. Um, but this movie is so much more than what I was ever expecting. I, in fact, when I found out that Greta Gerwig was going to be directing it, I was completely thrown. I had no idea what to expect because in the past, her films had always been much more films that I was interested in. And when I heard there was going to be a Barbie movie, I was simply expecting some sort of big budget advertisement for the brand. And I'm not saying that this is not a big budget advertisement for the brand, because obviously you're going to sell a lot of Barbies with the Barbie movie. But this film ended up being so much more, and it's actually so nuanced and so interesting, the things that have been done with the film and the story, the messages it's sending, whatever your feelings about the messages are, I, I do think they were not expected. So anytime you get a film that does something really surprising, I think that's a pretty incredible feat. Because again, not at all what I was expecting with the Barbie movie. Um, so very, very basic storyline. We've got Barbie and Ken. They're living their life in this sort of candy-coated, like, perfect utopia. And then Barbie gets a chance to go to another, the, uh, the real world, and things really start to shift. They're already shifting a bit when we're in the perfect utopia, but we, we don't see real change happening until we get out of that sort of perfect plastic world. Um, and that is like a super, super, super streamlined description that leaves out a ton, but I don't, if, if you have not seen it before and you don't know too much about it, I don't want to get any deeper into it because again, part of the joy of this film was all of the surprise that I had while watching it. Um, because I really did not know what to expect at all. Um, Gerwig does a phenomenal job directing this mainly because you know that even with fantastic actors, with characterizations that are very, very, not over the top, but very plastic, for a lack of a better descriptor, uh, you have to have good direction in order to make it feel emotional, in order to connect with an audience. And they absolutely do this. Whether or not we're talking about Ken and Barbie pre-awakening or, or post it's, it's, it's just really phenomenally well directed and exceptionally well acted. Um, the, the whole cast is really, really amazing. Of course, you're anchored by, uh, Barbie, Margot Robbie and, um, 
Ken, Ryan Gosling, but the whole cast from, you know, Kate McKinnon as Weird Barbie, which she's just a delight in that. I, I loved her in this. Uh, even with her small, small role, it was just very resonant. Also, side note, weird Barbie in this was what I would do to the Barbie dolls when I was a kid, like with the weird hair and the, it's just, that's, that was, that was me and Barbie. Uh, anyway, Simu Lu, uh, is his character is one of the Kens. I, I mean, it was just delightful. And then seeing other actors pop up, like Will Ferrell, and and it was just delightful. Again, so much fun. I laughed out loud so many times, and you can tell so many of the actors were having a great time with it. And that's and that's one of those things where you don't necessarily always feel like is the situation. Um, and and to be so over the top and so candy and so plastic, and to still have like emotional depth and connection. That's, that's a big deal. Um, it was hugely accoladed, like from all of the uh, award groups and in the Academy Awards, it was nominated for best picture, best adapted screenplay, best supporting actor, best supporting actress, uh, both Ryan Gosling and, uh, America Ferreira were nominated for this. And then, uh, it was nominated for best original song with both I'm just Ken, which is phenomenal and hilarious and what I was made for, which for me, it has like the resonance of, like Toy Stories 2, When She Loved Me, one of those songs that you are not expecting to find in the movie that's so like devastating and lovely that it it's just almost a shock to the system when you hear it because it's it's just, again, not something you're expecting to find in the Barbie movie. And that's what, what I was made for is some of the lyrics in it are just astonishingly, astonishingly sad, but also really, really beautiful. Billie Eilish is just amazing as far as writing goes. And the song itself ended up winning best Oscar, not our best original song, not at all surprised. But if you have not yet had a chance to see the live performance of I'm Just Ken, it is available through Atlantic Records on YouTube. And I strongly recommend you watch it because, because it is delightful and ridiculous and over the top and just fantastic. So I'm just Ken Atlantic Records on YouTube. Wonderful, wonderful watch there. Uh, but yeah, all together, just, just a delightful film. Again, it was quite controversial due to thematics and, you know, however you feel about the theme, I do think it's a movie worth watching just because it does do so many unexpected things and it is so well acted and it's just a great, great film for, for watching and seeing reactions of people watching it, especially for the first time. So if you get the chance again, strongly, strongly recommended available on both DVD and Blu-ray through Cleavenet service, 2023's RP. Moving on to my second pick. Uh, it is also available on DVD and Blu-ray via our Cleavenet service. And that is 2022's she said. So she said is one of those films I'm incredibly glad I watched, but it is definitely a hard watch because of the theme. So in she said, we're following a film that's based on a memoir by the reporters, Jody Cantor and Megan Tui. These two reporters were the women who sort of broke and exposed the Harvey Weinstein uh, history of abuse and, uh, sexual misconduct. And this film sort of traces the journey from discovering this to be a situation, the investigation, the fallout, and it does it in a way that I think is really, really sensitive to the subject matter. This could get salacious so easily. And that had been, one of the things that I was kind of worried about, were, what were we getting into with this kind of film? But it, it is very sensitive to the nature of the story, but it does, I think, give it a very relatable pacing and face. Um, and I, I do think that it helps having the distance there a little bit. The people representing the people, for the most part, that ha this happened to 
is sometimes a little bit easier to sort of digest what is that was actually going on than, you know, with it being in the news every day for that, for that long period of time, it felt like there was, there was always something new coming out and being revealed. And it was just so disturbing, (laughs) like really, really, you know, there, it, it went on for so long that, you know, being able to process everything was, was, I think, challenging. Uh, in a way where you still felt like the impact. And this movie does a very good job of letting everything sort of sink in. The acting is exceptional. You've got Carrie Mulligan and Zoe Kazan playing the two reporters, but you've also got a cast filled with uh, Patricia Clarkson, Jennifer Ella, uh, Samantha Morton, Andre Bauer in, Brower in his very last film uh, before his passing. Uh Ashley Judd, one of the women who was involved in this entire situation, is in the film as herself. You have voice work from some of the women who are also involved in this case. And again, difficult subject matter, but I think a topic that is incredibly timely and important to process. Um, This whole situation, of course, gave birth to the the Me Too movement uh, and you know, we look at a landscape that is, is dealing with all of the things that were revealed and, you know, the, the awareness that we have to carry with us at this point. Uh, and again, I think it does all of that with a great deal of sensitivity. Um, so this film, did not receive an Academy Award nomination, but it did receive multiple no- nominations for the British Academy Film Awards. Uh, Mulligan also received a Golden Globe Award nomination. Uh, Lenkiewicz received a Critics' Choice nomination for the script. And it did receive a huge amount of critical acclaim. Uh, I know, again, I did not watch it when it first came out. I I just could not do that. (laughs) But after a while, uh, I, I did sit down and watch it and I, I'm really grateful that I did. It definitely made certain things that were kind of hazy as far as my memory had gone of the, at that particular time, a little bit more clear and a little bit more accessible. Uh, and, and so as far as information goes and a way to sort of, I think, get viewers into a place where they can process all of the information in, an an easier way. This film is really, really excellent. Uh, again, acting is phenomenal. Your storyline is your storyline. And I think it urges people to then go out and look at like all of the factual information that's out there and to look at articles that have come out since about in general, like the topic of, you know, sexual harassment and assault and workplace environment and, you know, the concept of how cronyism leads to some seriously awful things. Um, but yeah, so if you are at all interested in recent history, if you are someone who wants to make themselves more aware of certain situations, I would definitely recommend, she said, while it is a hard watch, it is definitely worthwhile and it's done in a very sensitive manner. So again, she said available both on DVD and Blu-ray via our Cleavenet service. Okay, my final recommendation of the day is available via our Hoopla service and that is 2002's The Hours. So I remember when this film first came out, I had read the book and loved it. I remember going to the movie and I remember leaving it feeling emotionally drained and fairly devastated, but in the best possible way, (laughs) um, it was emotionally connected. It was well acted, beautifully directed, wonderfully filmed. I remember thinking it is a fantastic film that I don't know if I'll watch again. Uh, And 20 years down the line, I feel the same way and also remember how I felt when I first watched it. And that's pretty incredible to recall after 20 years, the way you felt about a film. I mean, it's not like it's not like Gremlins that I watch every year. You know, I, I really didn't watch it for two decades. And 
it still has that same emotional resonance. And that's really saying something. I think that that's a sign of an incredibly well made film. So with the hours, it is based on Michael Cunningham's novel of the same title. Um, it is one of those movies that sort of plays with fact and fiction and it is paced in such a way that you sort of get lost in the storylines. In the hours, we are following three women. We're following Virginia Woolf. We are following a woman named Laura Brown, and we are following a woman named Clarissa Vaughn. These three women we follow over the course of a single day in their lives. Uh, and that single day is in some way quite pivotal to their existence. Um, the only exception is we get a intro and bumper that is sort of out of time from all three of these women. Of course, Virginia, Virginia Woolf's uh, storyline uh, is set in like the, the, the time period when she's writing Mrs. Dalloway in the 1920s. Laura's story takes place in the early 1950s. And then Clarissa's story takes place in 2001, right around present day to the film. These women all are looking for something, something more. And it's one of those movies that sort of plays around with the idea of, you know, the feminine mystique, the problem that has no name there. There's just this sense of something else that's being missed or that has been lost that you cannot describe. And all three women deal with this in completely different ways. Their responses to just the little bits and pieces in their daily lives that are touched by this feeling of emptiness is different. And they all are women who are going to approach solutions to this thing in very different ways as well. And the women who you've got playing these roles, Nicole Kidman is a Virginia Woolf. Laura Brown is played by Julianne Moore and Clarissa Vaughn is played by Meryl Streep. You have three powerhouse actresses who you see go through all of the emotions as they're processing things that are happening to them, as they're going through plans for what they want to do or need to do. And it's just, it's just sort of a masterclass in acting watching this, but you're so wrapped up in the stories and what's happening to these people that you don't even realize that's what's happening until afterward. And when you can sort of analyze all the bits and pieces, there are a ridiculous number of other phenomenal actors in here. You've got Stephen Delane, Ed Harris, John C. Riley, Allison Janney has a small role in here, Miranda Richardson, uh, it, it's just a ridiculous roster of actors, to be honest. And, you know, it's no wonder. And let me get, I'm going to read right off of here. It w it received a ridiculous number of um, Oscar nominations. Best Picture, Best Director, Best Supporting Actor, Best Supporting Actress, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Costume Design, Best Film Editing, Best Original Score, and it garnered Nicole Kidman a Best Actress Oscar. Um, it's one of those films that was given these kinds of accolades for a reason. Again, it's not a happy movie. It is absolutely not. If you were looking for something that is bright and sunny, do not watch this film. <laughs> this is not going to be it for you. But if you're looking for something that is really deeply introspective, that has ties to like very real situations in the world that has ties to like entire periods of, you know, sort of situational and emotional trauma for whole groups of people. Definitely check this out again. So masterfully acted. I think that the adaptation was really, really phenomenally well done as well as even as someone who adored the book as much as I did. Uh, and, and it's just, like I said, a really interesting sort of window into these three different characters. It's just one single day that we get with them, but it's an, it's an incredibly impactful day. And 
you know, I, again, it's one of those films that just kind of stays with you. So if that's something that you're interested in, if you're looking for that kind of resonance, make sure you check out the hours. Again, it's available on our Hoopla service and it is an absolute must watch. Okay, so that is it for my recommendations of Women's History Month award-winning and acclaimed films. If you have any recommendations that you would also like to add, please pop those in the comments below. If you have any recommendations for themes you'd like to see us cover in the future, definitely share those as well. As always, thank you so, so much for joining me. I hope that you were able to find a few recommendations here, but if you didn't, make sure you check out our streaming services, Hoopla and Canopy, or just check out our general catalog through Clevenet. There are literally thousands of films to pick from. So uh, after all of that, thank you again so much for joining me, and hopefully I will see you next week. Bye-bye!